which was that I wrote, as soon as I graduated from college, I wrote three novels, which were all terrible and were all rejected everywhere, all over town. Um, and then, once I was in graduate school, people started asking me for things. Um, and I started having work solicited, and so with Flyover State, this um, company called Flatline Crooked that is now defunct, um, asked me if I had a novella, because they wanted to start publishing a series of novellas, and I didn't. But I said yes. Um, and then I gave them my longest short story, which isn't even that long, really. It's about 25, 30 pages. It's in here, Flyover State. Um, and they published it as a standalone novella. Um, and then on the strength of that, um, this other independent small press contacted me and said, do you have a book of stories? We want to publish your book of short stories, which is something people don't say very often. And so I said, I didn't. But I said, yes. <laughs> and then I put it together. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's, that's how these books came about. Yes. Miss Roper. Um, what are you working on now? I am deep, neck deep in revisions um, for a novel that will be out next fall, fall 2012 from Riverhead. Called Laura Lamont's Life in Pictures. It's very glamorous. Um, it's about a movie star. It starts in the 1920s in Hollywood and goes all the way through 1970 and 70s. Um, so mostly I'm like reading 1930s fan magazines and things like that at the moment, which is really fun. I highly recommend it. Um, yeah, so I'm, I have to turn in a new draft in September. So I'm, what am I doing here? I should be home working. <laughs> I loved Orient Point. Thank you. Can you talk a little bit more about it? How you did it? What? Just things? It's just marvelous. Thank you. Um, yeah, Orient Point is one of my favorites, actually. It's, it's one of the stories that I wrote most recently. Um, and it was one that really surprised me as I was writing it because I thought I there was all this other stuff that was going to happen to this couple, and I, it, it was going to be a much longer story. Um, but then, you know, I started writing it, and I got to that the point where the story ends now, and I realized that it was done. And I said, sort of had to back away um, because I, I thought it felt so complete to me already, even though it's, you know, it's the shortest story in the book. It's only about four pages long. Um, yeah, so that, that's how that one goes. Oh, so one line you said, um, he did as he was told, yeah. something like that. Yeah. It's almost over now. Yeah. Oh was. You saw it coming. You saw it coming before I did, I think. <laughs> yeah. How long would you say it took you to write that story? Uh, oh. Um, well, I had, I think I, I had the first couple of pages for a few days, and then, and then the rest I wrote in one sitting. You know, like I, I had, I wrote the first scene, I think I probably wrote it in two sittings, but I wrote the first part and I was like, oh, uh, these people are not very happy. And I sort of wandered away. <laughs> I wasn't sure I wanted to hang out with them so much. Um, but yeah, and then I wandered away, and then I came back, and that's when I wrote the, you know, the, the scene at the beach, which was my, the, the, the impetus for writing the story was that scene, which I knew was, had to be there. But then I realized that that was the story. That was the whole story, that you, you learn everything you need to know about these characters in that. Are you still writing poetry? Oh, David knows my secret history <laughs> as a poet. Um, sometimes. Yeah. I've actually published a few poems recently, cool. um, which is really fun because it does seem like this secret thing mm. that I used to do all the time. Um, I don't do it very much. It, I get so much more pleasure out of it now mm. that I don't, that I'm not 
thinking of myself as a poet. Gotcha. I found it really exhausting <laughs> <laughs> to be a poet. Um, but yeah, no. Now that it's just a, a different medium, mm -hmm. now I now I quite I quite like it. Cool. Yeah. Not very often though. Just like you know, yeah. every now and again. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Do you ever miss your characters? I actually um, read Flyover's Day, bought it, and read it. Or was you know by itself, and then read it again here, and I miss knowing what happens to Sophie. Yeah. Because I think she's so wonderful. I really love her. I'm glad you like her. Some people don't like her. Some people tell me how irritating they think she is. I'm glad well, you like her. I like she, her too. It, you know, she is in a sense. But then, you know, scenes like that you did where she's in the those the other people's bath, the professor's yeah. bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. I mean, it's just so great. And I, I love that person. I mean, do you ever want to I wanted that to be longer. Yeah. And I always, I wonder, I know you're writing something completely different. Now. Yeah. Do you ever think about going back to things like that? I do. I mean, I don't, I don't think about going back to, to them mm -hmm. because then I would have to figure out like whether Mud like, it was like actually murdering people and uh -huh. keeping them in his basement, which like yes. it probably is. Um, yeah. If you haven't read the story collection yet, doesn't that make you so excited? <laughs> <laughs> um, but there are, I mean, there, there, are the three, there are three stories in the book with the character Franny Gold, mm -hmm. who I really loved and who I wrote an entire novel about, and then I had to dismantle it and take it apart, um, because it, as a novel, it, it didn't work at all. It was deadly boring, nothing happened, and all of the exciting parts, or all the parts that I cared about, were in flashback, <laughs> which meant, really, that I was just writing short stories. Mm -hmm about this character and then trying to stitch them together um, in this sort of manufactured way. Um, so I think about her, I think about that character because I know, I feel like I know her so well because I, you know, the, the earliest story that she appears in, she's a teenager. Um, and then, you know, it, it follows her as she gets married and as she has children and as the children get older. And, um, so I think about her and mm -hmm. where she is, but she's sort of the only one. Because, right. you know, Ellen Gilchrist, for example, yeah. I love it when you, you, you read something later and yeah. you encounter one of these yeah. previous people, yeah. it's like see, meeting a friend. Yeah, right, so maybe, yeah. you know, this is, just, this is my first collection of stories, so maybe, you know, two or three collections down the road, mm -hmm. so people come back. I'll keep an eye out for her. <laughs> <laughs> many different types of people. So it's not you're only writing about young married women. Yeah, I hope not. Yeah. That, that could yeah. be good too. Yeah. I yeah. mean, there's, you know, but, but, but you have such a, a wide variety of interesting characters that you all, you, you seem to catch them. Oh, good. Um, I appreciate it. Thank you. That's not really a question, but I will take the compliment. <laughs> mostly the former that I one of my favorite things to do is travel and when I'm traveling I'm always working really because I'm always taking notes on the people or the place or the architecture or whatever um, and so there are several stories in, in this collection that you know started out just as notes I took on a vacation you know like um, last year two years ago my husband and I went to Palm Springs I'd never been to before, and I thought it was the greatest place on earth. And then I was like, wait, but what if, like, you weren't here with your husband and you weren't having a good time, and you were here with your sister who you kind of hate? And then it just goes from there. I don't have a sister, so it's okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so a lot of them started with, with actually with location, and then you just go, you go from there. Most of them. Uh, 
<laughs> well, it depends. It depends how you want to write it. If you wanted to write it a story in the first person, then you can build a character by talking about everything the character sees and thinks and feels, um, which is sort of, I like to think the sort of easiest way to jumpstart something. Like if you're in the first person, then you know exactly where you are and you know exactly who you're with. Um, or um, if you're writing in the third person, then you can tell us sort of, you can dip into everybody's heads and find out what everybody's thinking. Um, and be aware of what other people are observing about each other, which is also a way I think we learn about people is that, you know, you have dinner with your, you know, friend and her mother, and then her mother goes home, and then you and your friend start talking about her mother, and that's how you understand her character and her mother's character and everything, you know what I mean? All right. Dialogue, I guess, is what that means. That's the short answer. Dialogue and multiple personalities. <laughs> Wait, Joey, you Hi. Hi. Uh, why do you write for publication? Is it fun or do you not have other things to do? Or do <laughs> <laughs> you just love it? I do, ha as you know, I do have other things to do. I have many other jobs. Um, I don't know. I do, it's just always something that I've done. I mean, I, I, it's always the job that I assumed I would have. It's always the career path that I assume. Yeah, I mean, it was. Ju it's always the life that I thought I would have. My father was a writer also, and so it just seemed like the normal job to me that people had. You know, like if your dad is like a veterinarian, then you think veterinarian, that's like a job that grown-ups have. Um, and so I just always thought that being a writer was like the thing that you did when you grew up. So I'm working on it. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Your father's a writer? Too. Yes, my father's a writer too. His name's Peter Straub. You should all buy his books and get you. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. No, he's good. I'm not making it up. <laughs> he's, written, he's only written like 25 novels. He's, he's, not, he's new on the scene. <laughs> yes, Caitlin. very scary books where people die. <laughs> and one book that he wrote when I was a very small child, um, when we were living in Connecticut, which he hated, um, he wrote a book where the pregnant woman and her, and her daughter inside of her are murdered. So I was like, oh, thanks, Dad. That's totally awesome that that's what you're, that's the kid in your book. Um, so that's the only way I've ever appeared in his fiction. <laughs> he did, when I was in, like, um, preschool, there was a girl I went to preschool with who had a name he really liked. Her name was Lily Sheehan. I have no idea what happened to her. I don't know. She might be great. She might not be. Um, but my dad really liked her name, and so he used her name for somebody that I don't think met a good end either. Um. So yeah, it's not good when you recognize yourself in my dad's books. I feel like my books are, it's, you're, you're like, a lit, it's safer territory. Safer territory. Mm. Has your, has your, does your husband feel that way? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I'm not, I don't, I guess I do recognize some things in some of your stuff. Okay, let's not, let's not. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I don't want to get into it. <laughs> no. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for coming. Happy bachelorette party to Jeff.